and the year ahead for the global economy looks slightly better than initially projected, although risks still remain. That's according to the International Monetary Fund's latest global growth forecast. So global growth is expected to come in at 2.9% this year, and that's 0.2 percentage points higher than what was projected in October. The IMF sees growth hitting 3.1% next year, and the IMF says the rise in central bank rates to fight inflation and also Russia's war in Ukraine will continue to weigh on economic activity. But China's reopening has somewhat paved the way for a faster than expected recovery. The report also points to tentative grounds for optimism, including the possible easing of the cost of living crisis. Global inflation is expected to fall to 6.6% this year from 8.8% in 2022. It will decline further to 4.3% in 2024. The IMF also sees the possibility of a stronger boost from pent-up demand in many economies. But severe health outcomes in China, the escalation of Russia's war in Ukraine, and tighter global financing conditions could hamper economic progress. And to discuss more on this, we have Pierre-Olivier Gorinchas. He's economic counselor and head of research department at the IMF, joining us from Singapore. Hello there, Mr. Gorinchas. Glad for, uh, for you joining us on the show today. So global growth forecast this year, let's zoom in straight into that. In short, is it really a better one than last year? What are some of the many factors shaping your outlook, both on the upside and the downside? Well, first, thank you very much for having me. Um, I want to say that it's still the projected growth for this year and next year, 2.9% in 2023, 3.1%, so it's a rebound in 2024. These are still relatively low global growth numbers. So these are not going to, this is not going to be a global environment that is going to be roaring on all cylinders. But yet we have a, a, a small upgrade to our forecast, and that small upgrade to our forecast is coming because we have a lot of resilience, a lot more than expected in the global economy that we've seen in the second half of last year. We've seen very strong labor markets in the U.S., in other advanced economies, in, in some emerging market economies. We've seen very robust private demand, households, consumption, business investment, has been quite resilient. We've seen many European countries that have proved quite resilient to the energy crisis, the uh, fact that they are not able to get any Russian gas uh, uh, anymore. Um, mm. And so you put all of these things together, and we had pretty resilient uh, second half of the year, the latter part of 2022. And then on top of it, you have the reopening of China's economy that was announced towards the end of the year, and is paving the way for a, a fairly strong uh, rebound in activity in 2023. We're projecting 5.2% for this year. That's a 0.8 percentage point upward revision. So all of these things together give us a slightly more, uh, you know, a beat outlook than we expected back in October. Mr. Grinches, as you rightly mentioned, their growth is projected to decline sharply in some advanced economies. However, there's a modest rise for emerging and developing Asia. We'd like to know the two Asian powerhouse economies, China and India. You mentioned that they will supply more than 50 percent of global growth in 2023. That is right. I mean, India's economy uh, is projected to grow at about 6.8 percent in 2022's fiscal year, which extends until the end of March, uh, and then to slow down somewhat, but still to 6.1 percent in, uh, in the next fiscal year. So you combine this with the strong rebound in economic activity in China and the size of these two economies, of course, and what you get is that this accounts for about half of global growth, while by contrast, you know, the U.S. and the euro area will account, given the slowdown that we're projecting in these in this, uh, uh, regions, will account for less than or about 10% of global growth. With China's reopening, Help us paint the picture for um, especially the ASEAN 5. You know, how is it going to help the likes of Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore and Thailand? And how is it giving us a leg up? Well, what we are expecting is the reopening of China is going to uh, have multiple effects. One is going to increase production because we won't have 
uh, these uh, lockdowns and confinements that we had in 2022 that would come and disrupt production. Then also there will be a rebound in, in household consumption. Uh, households are not confined anymore. They can go out. They can start uh, spending. They can start traveling. For instance, tourism uh, uh, expenditures is likely to pick up quite a bit in the coming year. Our estimates at the International Monetary Fund suggest that whenever Chinese growth is higher by one percentage point, global growth is higher by 0.3 percentage point. That's globally. But of course, the effect is stronger on close trading partners of China, and that includes uh, many, uh, many uh, Asian economies. Well, in your report, you say that 2023 will see global growth bottoming out and inflation peaking. Now, with the recovery in consumer spending, which is thanks to China's reopening, on the flip side, this could push prices higher. Explain to us how faster disinflation could contribute to upside risks this year. Well, so what we are seeing uh, is with the reopening of China's economy, there certainly is going to be stronger demand. And so you're right to point out that this could lead to some price pressures. Uh, but let's keep in mind that the overall, overall, the global economy is still going to cool off for going from 3.4% last year to 2.9% this year. So overall, what we are saying is aggregate demand, aggregate production is cooling off. In part, this is the effect of the tightening policies that have been implementing by central banks. And that is likely to weigh down on, on price pressures more than just the reopening of China. So even with the, said differently, even with the reopening of China, we're anticipating that price pressures will continue to abate and not only headline inflation, but also core inflation, measures that are uh, less volatile, excludes energy and food prices, will also start coming down in 2023. Speaking of inflation, for most economies, the priority here remains achieving a sustained reduction in inflation toward target levels. But with diverging stages of recovery across Asia, what would be the key and the common thread to policy priorities in the region? Well, in Asia, in, in most countries, actually, the important thing in terms of setting the dials for monetary policy is to look at what is happening in terms of inflation pressures. And you're right to point out that these inflation pressures could be different in, in different countries, and, and, and they are. For instance, we don't have much inflation pressures yet in China. We have very moderate inflation pressures in a country like Japan, which justify that monetary policy could remain, should remain quite accommodating uh, for the time being. But other countries, I mean, whether you look at Singapore or you look at other uh, Asian economies or around the world, are facing uh, stronger inflation pressures. And it's appropriate in that case to make sure that monetary policy gets into a, a restrictive stance, if you want. So it tightens aggregate demand sufficiently that it can bring down inflation towards its target by the end of this year or into next year. Well, Pierre-Olivier Garinchas, Economic Counselor and Head of Research Department at IMF, thank you so much for your insight today. Pleasure having you on the show.